Hi guys, it's Ben here. We are back once again with a video discussing Liverpool transfers. There's been some more rumours today, as there always is. We are at that time of the year. The World Cup may be rife with action, but the transfer stories just don't seem to stop. Now it's half nine on Thursday evening. I've just watched Dan and Lovren have a great game for Croatia as they beat Argentina 3-0, so very, very positive there. Doesn't mean we're not going to be linked with more centre-backs, though, which I'll get onto later. But let's start with um, attacking players. Obviously, Nabil Fakir deal is still... 50-50, so of course there are other links to players in similar positions, one of which is Lorenzo Insigne, uh, obviously a highly rated player, he's been playing at the top level for a long time, he's been at Napoli for a long, long time, um, always a player that's been highly rated, never really never really been seriously linked with the move away, he's always one of those names that's mentioned, but he's never been linked to Liverpool really before properly, um, Other, I feel like he's been linked with Chelsea before. But apparently, um, according to Transfer Market Web, I mean, who are they? Uh, they're claiming that Klopp will turn his attentions to Insignia, um, who scored 14 times last season um, after the Fakir deal you know, supposedly fell through. Uh, we're looking at £50 million pounds, uh, as a supposed fee here. Now, it's his versatility that's said to him impress Klopp. He does mainly play on the left-hand side of a front three, so... Whether he can slot in in the middle, um, as, as Fakir could have done, uh, I don't know. But if you look at Lorenzo Insigne's stats, I've got them in front of me now, it's very, very consistent. It's very, very strong. Last season, uh, in the league alone, it was 8 goals and 11 assists in 37 appearances. So he's involved in a goal every other game. The season before that, it was extraordinary. 18 goals and 9 assists. Before that, it was 12 goals and 10 assists. You know, these are just his league figures. There's obviously some impressive stats in other competitions as well. Lorenzo Insigne, 27 years old, peak of his powers, consistent for the last four or five years. Um, obviously makes sense on paper. Uh, it's a lot of money for a guy, typically an older guy than we'd usually go for. And I know who the versatility is, is a thing, but for me, I'm not sure how, how, how suitable he is to play in that midfield role. He could play as a number nine, I feel. You know, he's got, he's got a bit of pace about him and, and trickery. Um, but we'll see. It's, it's, it's a good option. It's a good alternative to Fakir. Um, I still feel like the Fakir deal is alive, but Insignia obviously would be a terrific replacement, even at 27 years of age. Um, he's not at the World Cup at the moment, so no distractions there. He's an Italy player, so um, if we wanted to crack on with negotiations there, we, you know, we can uh, be Napoli's guest. So that's one to look forward to, um, if it is indeed um, something uh, that's concrete. Another player in that position, or an, an atta another attacking player at least, that we're looking at supposedly is Emil Forsberg um, of Leipzig, who we obviously dealt with last year for Naby Keita, who will be arriving in a couple of weeks. Um, and Calcio Mercato, it's another another cracking source there. You know, I've, I've got to say how it is, it's Calcio Mercato. But, you know, this so far this window, some of these more outlandish outlets certainly in France have been getting things right. Um, obviously Calcio Mercato is an Italian outlet and they've been kind of um, on and off for a long time. I'm, I'll never forget the Matteo Kovacic situation a few years ago when it was all pretty much fabricated um, by these sort of outlets. But yeah, they're saying uh, that, that Leipzig won't budge on their £35 million uh, valuation um, of Emil Forsberg who is a midfielder. Um, Injuries obviously uh, hampered his progress last season. Um, just looking at his stats, it was only two goals and two assists in 21 appearances. Season before that, though, when he did get some rhythm, uh, when Leipzig were a real force, he got eight goals and 19 assists uh, in the Bundesliga. Obviously, Naby Keita had a terrific season that year as well. Timo Werner was at his best, so everything really clicked for Leipzig that season. He was very much at the heart of it. He's 26 years old. He is at the World Cup at the moment with Sweden, so um, we'd have to wait there. We're not... We're not um, being seriously linked with this player, but we have been linked with him in the past. I think we can safely say we have been very interested in this player in the past. And he has come out and said, he's implied that he is uh, ready to make the next step in his career. He's 26, he's about to hit his peak, just like Insignia. Um, and he may be looking to make the next move. Um, so that could be one that Liverpool look for. So leave a comment with whether you'd prefer to see Forsberg uh, or Lorenzo Insigne as Liverpool's alternative to Nabil Fakir. If indeed there is needed to be an alternative to Nabil Fakir, we may end up signing the Frenchman anyway. But that is the latest links on the attacking front. Going to the defence. Now, I'm not of the opinion that we necessarily need another centre-back this summer. I'm sure that we'll be linked with some and you know I, I'd be more than happy to, to pick one up. Um, depending on what our plans are for Ragnar Klavan and John Matip, 
neither of which are a first choice, particularly Clavin and Matip. It's all dependent on it, on injuries, really. Um, he's been plagued for a while now, and he's fallen out of favour with Klopp and with supporters as well. I, don't, I think people are starting to realise he's not quite um, the calibre of player we were hoping he would be. There's Joe Gomez in there as well. Do we see him long term as a centre back? I think he has played well there at times for. Well, for, 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 I think he played in, in a back three for England and um, he has played once or twice there for Liverpool. Uh, but never really had a run in the team there. Um, I, th I think a full back is still primarily where he's going to be seen, but we've got two good right backs in Trent and Klein. We've got two good left backs, or, well, we've got two left backs. We've got a great one in Robertson and we've got one that's happy to sit on the bench there, seemingly in Moreno. Um, Joe Gomez will kind of slot in there somewhere, or it could be a fifth centre back. He's kind of their versatile player. Um, do we need another one if we're going to keep everyone else? Which one would you really see us selling? You know, we're not going to sell Van Dijk or Lovren. Matip, I guess we could uh, cash in on now. Um, Ragnar Clavin, it's just, again, why, why not just keep him around? Doesn't mean the Guardian aren't going to link us with Harry Maguire, though. That's what came out this morning. Um, the England international, he's only been at Leicester for a year after he moved from Hull when they got relegated. Um, I used to like Harry Maguire. But, but I just feel like I've, since, uh, since he's been a part of the England team and more attention on him, I guess, I've been watching him and I just don't think the guy can run and I don't think the guy can turn around. I appreciate that he's good at bringing the ball out and he can pick out a pass and he actually gets quite a few goals and assists for, for a centre-back. He just seems to always pop up with goals and we've got that equaliser against Man United. But I just don't think the guy's technically that good. I really don't. I think this might not be a popular opinion. I just honestly, I think his feet like get stuck when he's trying to turn around. He's just so unorthodox and so ungainly on the ball. I just don't trust him. I, I'm just not a huge fan. Um, you know, I, I, I was probably one of the guys that when we didn't sign Van Dyke last summer said, why don't we look at someone like Maguire? Because, you know, um, it would have been a low risk. Um, you still got resale value there. I probably would have been happy with that. But now that I've kind of seen him in high profile moments, I honestly don't think he is good enough for Liverpool. They also mentioned there that Jamal Lascelles and James Tarkovsky could be options and we're tracking those two. Um, and that's not the first time that's been mentioned. I would honestly rather take either of those guys over Harry Maguire, um, particularly Jamal Lascelles. Um, so yeah, that, that's where I stand on that. But yeah, the Guardian is saying that we're having a look at Maguire. I'm sure quite a few people are as he's coming into prominence now, but I just don't rate him that highly. Leave a comment with your thoughts on him and whether you think we need a new centre-back and whether you'd get rid of any of our current ones. I know some people still don't like Dayan Lovren. Um, he pocketed Messi tonight, so, you know, ha make your opinions known on that. So that is the update for today. I'm sure there'll be more tomorrow and Saturday and over the weekend and over the next few weeks. Nabil Fakir deal, not dead still. Um, Forsberg and Insigne linked, um, albeit loosely today. Harry Maguire as well. We'll see how that goes. As I say, always, as always, leave a comment with your thoughts on the current Liverpool transfer situation and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook for more. Subscribe, of course, if you're new and I'll see you next time.